Hey everyone, and welcome to Jack's Nation. Uh, this is not going to be particularly entertaining, so forgive me in advance. I'm just making a response to a rather worrying article I read the other day. It's entitled, You Must Be Ashamed or We Are All Lost. And it's written by a Swedish comedian, author, and honorary doctor of theology called Jonas Gardell as an open letter to Mark Zuckerberg. As a person, I kind of like Jonas. He seems nice. As a comedian, not my cup of tea, but that's fine. Uh, as an intellectual, I find myself disagreeing with him rather frequently. In his open letter to Mark, he talks about the prominent issue of social platforms being used to spread misinformation and to make threats under the false sense of being released of any kind of accountability. Jonas wants uh, Mark to have a sense of responsibility for the content that is being spread on his platform, Facebook, despite Mark's consistent disclaims of such. Uh, this is a rather long article, and I'll try to address as many points and uh, as thoroughly as I possibly can. Uh, in the first paragraph, Jonas writes the following after describing how he and his husband have been subject to threats, uh, to death threats, and uh, pretty heinous slander of on various social media. Sure, I too should perhaps be able to put up with reading about how, how I'm going to be strung up from lampposts and thrown off rooftops, how my genitals are going to be sliced off and shoved up my anus, how my children are going to be forced to watch as someone slits my throat. I might be able to put up with it, but I seriously cannot really understand how you can put up with it. The cases of threats and slander you've allegedly received, Jonas, are criminal offenses. If you've had these sent to you, it's a it's pretty pretty clear cut cases. No one, no one would ever make the argument that you should put up with this kind of harassment. I implore you to report every single case and pursue justice because you have, as asserted by yourself, been the victim of a crime. And I'm behind you 100% of that. I I condemn the people who do these kinds of disgusting fucking things. However, you do strive pretty far from seeking actual justice with the rest of your article slash letter. Straight after explaining how death threats and slander are running rampant on social media platforms, you jump to the spreading of misinformation being, um, uh, being done via the same channels. While I agree with you that misinformation can be very problematic, it's not really within the same realm as actual threats of violence. You make the claim that lies are winning over truths because fake news stories are sometimes spread and shared to a greater extent and faster than real ones. Well, trust me, I disdain people who build their narrative around misinformation, feminism being one very eminent example. But the reason why false news get, gets widespread is because they usually carry something that people enjoy. Reactionary value or shock value. It lives by it, feeds on it, and it also dies by its own popularity the moment it gets scrutinized by a critical mind. False news stories don't tend to be long-lived. They usually blow up and then get debunked and pushed to the side into nothingness. You also make a rather ridiculous example, a very specific one, when Bo Lindholm, who, by the way, is taken seriously by absolutely no one, claimed that the photo of the Syrian boy, uh, Alan Kurdi, whose dead body washed ashore in Turkey, was staged. His evidence of this um, claim was nothing but going by my gut, basically, um, essentially making his claim an assertion fallacy. So. Why do you even bring it up here? It was it was debunked. No one is taking him seriously. He was met with harsh criticism for that. And from this, you move rapidly on to hate speech laws, about which I've made my feelings very clear. I despise and loathe them with every fiber in my body. You mention that it's against the law to deny the Holocaust in Germany, Austria, and France. Mention is, by the way, um, no way of making it justice. You praise it. I think it should be well within 
every citizen's right to deny any historical event regardless of social significance. Why should law dictate that you shouldn't be allowed to make an absolute ass of yourself for no other reason than feels? I know the argument though. Um, I know it's not entirely about feels. I understand the importance of the specific event of the Holocaust. It's important that we don't forget. It's important that we don't that, that we do anything that is in, within our grasp to prevent anything like it to ever occur again. But as long as people like us, rational, sane, and critical people like me and to some degree you, the history deniers won't achieve much. We are here to hold them at bay. We are the champions of truth. We don't need to, to create judicial safe spaces to get the job done. Or at the very least, I don't. I think we should rather discuss the implication of censoring these people. Will the impendence of legal entanglement make these perceived harmful opinions disappear? I don't think so. Trying to abolish people's nonsensical views by simply denying them their right to voice them won't change their minds. Maybe civilized and rational discourse won't either. Maybe calling them out as the buffoons that they are isn't the answer, but it is a far better option than confining them to the dark corners of the internet where their ideas can fester within echo chambers of reinforcement to the point where they are beyond any convincing of their flawed rhetoric. Please consider this because this is, in my mind at least, a much more reasonable scenario than Oh, you know, just, just preventing them from saying what they think, that's gonna solve the problem, right? You try to make sense of holding the creators of social platforms to the same standard as journalists, all while disregarding one leering fact. They're not journalists! I shouldn't have to point out the absurdity to hold one individual accountable for the expressed views of another individual. It's well within your rights to ask that rules and guidelines that uphold your idea of an inclusive space should, uh, should be in place, and also that you ask the creators to enforce any existing rules to its greatest extent. But you have no other than yourself appointed right to ask of anyone to take responsibility for what other people say. The last part is what I find to be most irrational and outright laughable. You write a very well-formulated article largely about the problematic nature of the indifference of people spreading um, misinformation, and yet you appear to be completely impervious by the irony of yourself spreading misinformation in the same article. You assert that the spreading of lies and misinformation stands from the lack of shame in the people who engage in such activities. I think that in and of itself uh, is debatable. There are many reasons for spreading misinformation other than personal gain, trolling coming to mind. But in this context, let's just focus on personal uh, and ideological gain. Your example being Donald Trump claiming that climate change is a Chinese hoax, which of course is an obvious lie as most people with their heads screwed on right understand the austerity of climate change itself. People telling an obvious lie will be ridiculed and ostracized, but what if they feel no shame? The argument being that the feeling of shame is the motivational factor for being truthful, a model with which I don't entirely disagree. However, the reason stops here as you bring about the Bible. In the Bible, it says that, tr that the truth will set us free. But it also says in the Bible that it is God who will set us free. Truth and God are therefore one and the same. The truth has divine authority. Someone who disregards the truth and instead unashamedly embraces the lie is therefore a godless person. I find it hard to believe that anyone would believe that the concept of truth is owned by the Christian faith rather than truth preceding it, and that faith has some sort of divine monopoly on the sense of shame, behavior which can 
easily be linked to the sensation of shame has, after all, been witnessed in other mammals, species with absolutely no observable concept of God or faith. There are many points to be made, but I, I'd like to stop here in the interest of keeping this um, brief. I don't think uh, that Jonas will ever hear my response, let alone respond to it. I am, after all, a very insignificant YouTuber of almost no importance. If, however, this gets by, to you, by you, Jonas, know that I am open to discourse. I embrace the opportunity of the exchange of ideas. If you, uh, against all odds, enjoyed this uh, little rant, then I would appreciate it greatly and love you unconditionally if you would leave a like on, on this video and subscribe to my channel. Um, yeah, I, I gotta find a better way to end my videos. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, thank you very much for visiting the Jax Nation. Uh, I'm Jax, and uh, yeah, I, I, hopefully the next video I make will be a little bit more entertaining than this one. Uh, until next time, uh, give someone a blowjob. It's, uh, it's really awesome. Uh, take care.